Hello, my name is Dan Lesh, McKinley Research Group, formerly known as McDowell Group. I'm going to talk to you today about the impact of the pandemic on Alaska seafood industry. Start out with the big picture. Pre-COVID, Alaska seafood industry consisted of 60,000 direct jobs, 1.7 billion in earnings. And that's fishermen fishing on more than 9,000 vessels, over 200 seafood processing, the tourist side and at sea. Our fishermen produce about 2 billion in net vessel value each year. And the seafood processor turned that into 4.5 billion in wholesale value. As the state's largest private sector employer, provide critical economic activity and tax revenue across the state, especially in coastal and rural Alaska. About two thirds of Alaska seafood is exported by value, and that's to over 100 countries, the biggest of which are, include China, Japan, South Korea, and various European countries. Over 3 billion was exported for more than 10 years in export value. That has declined about 4% in the last couple of years, and we expect a bigger decline in 2020, partly due to China, our exports to China are down 38% in value since 2017. And that's despite a doubling in the value of their global seafood imports as their middle class rises and other factors come into play. On the positive side, our export value to Europe is up and has consistently been increasing the last couple of years. And some of the decline in export value comes from a growth in domestic market and increasing focus on domestic marketing by our processors and others. The 2020 year story for exports is, you can see in the first half of the year, we're within this gray range. That's this is export value by month and that's the gray is the last four years, the value range of values we've seen. So we spent the first part of 2020 in, in the normal range. And then as salmon runs failed or were extremely low Pacific cod tack low this year and then slower pollock bee season fishing we started to depart the norm here and this is due to a decline in value or sorry decline in volume not in value so this is due to these more biological factors of lower runs or slower pollock fishing so in in, in 2020 September our export volumes were down 25 percent compared to September 2019 and that's for salmon that month down 48 percent for instance. So that's kind of sets the stage for the impacts of the pandemic on our industry. Some of the things I'm going to talk about the most are include the increased operating costs for all players in the, in the industry as well as dramatic shifts in demand both increase and decrease. So transportation and logistic challenges due to decreased passenger air travel, which brings some, some of our most high value products to market. We're also seeing delays for shipments into China, um, especially in the recent months, up to a month delays with demerge fees. And then on the positive side, a weakening dollar increases the purchasing power for our foreign buyers. And we have seen a weakening dollar since the pandemic hit. Um, been a pretty steady trend. When you look at the increased operating costs, we were able to to reach out to various processors and find out find about fifty to sixty million in increased operating costs, and that's from March first to date, plus projections for the end of the year. Um, that includes smaller processors, shoreside, and at sea. Overall, we, we do see a 13% decline in processing employment this year. Uh, this especially it seems to have hit the salmon industry with the, that shaving off the peak of the processing employment in like August, down 13%. On the harvesting side, it's a lot harder to determine the exact costs incurred by all the 8,700 skippers in our industry. Of course, they all spend significant amounts of money, whether it's hundreds of dollars, thousands, or hundreds of thousands, adapting to changing up their fishing, dealing with quarantining crew, 
and meeting all the different requirements that evolved over the season as the season unfolded this spring. The pandemic was especially disruptive to the halibut sablefish seasons, which started basically as the pandemic was hitting. And of course, the communities that host all our economic activity in the, in the industry saw increased costs too. And then at the same time, they're likely to see decreased tax revenue from the seafood industry this year, as well as the businesses in those communities seeing decreased spending as harvesters and processors really weren't supposed to be out in those communities walking around spending money. On the demand side, this, in, this, this table on the right shows um, spending changes between this summer and 20, the summer of 20, 2019. You can see that food related spending was impacted the most, both on the high side and the low side uh, of all the different major retail spending categories. So food and beverage stores or grocery stores are up 15% in total spending from March to August of 2020 versus 2019. Whereas on the food service and drinking places side of things, down 29%, only beat by clothing stores, which are down 44%. So when you combine food service and grocery spending together, you still see a drop in food spending of about 8% or 60 billion this year. I'm gonna dive a little bit more into the grocery store increase that we see up here. This data shows weekly sales. You can see that big, huge jump as the stock up period hit there and then dropping back down and leveling off at about 10% over pre-pandemic levels, the 10% increase in grocery spending. Whereas on the other hand, the food service, restaurant and hotel markets dropped equally significantly over 65% drop from pre-pandemic levels and have not recovered. They're still down 30% or so. Within that increased grocery spending, it's interesting to note that seafood is actually the dominant category. So it's grown more than any other category this summer due to the pandemic. So that the growth is generally between, depending on how you slice the source of data, or who you talk to, growth about 25 to 30%. Diving deeper into that, for that seafood category, you can see that all types of seafood are driving that increase, that 25 to 30% increase, with frozen seafood being the, the biggest driver. This chart shows <clears throat> frozen or seafood, frozen and fresh sales compared to the same week in 2019. So at the end of this period, you see frozen seafood in October up 29% frozen seafood sales compared to the same week in 2019. Fresh seafood actually right behind it, 25%. And, and while well, shelf stable seafood isn't on this chart, we do see it, it being right behind fresh in terms of the total increase over 2019. I'm not going to talk as much about food service, but obviously we saw huge drops there as restaurants shut down. It's interesting to note, though, that limited service restaurants, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis data, I've been using a lot of that data today, that data has August spending at limited service restaurants in 2020 down only 1% from spending in 2019 at those types of restaurants. On the other hand, full service restaurants are, are at a quarter decrease spending in 2020, August compared to 2019. So we're seeing a shift where the limited service restaurants are really better positioned than those that aren't, don't use that model or adapting to try to add more drive through takeout delivery. When you look specifically at different fisheries, in our state, there's you can see that uh, Alaska Pollock, for instance, a season was underway when the pandemic hit, so that went business as usual, more or less. B season started a couple months into the pandemic, 
We saw an outbreak on one ship. We saw also slower fishing and smaller fish leading to supply shortfalls and um, lower yields for filet and surimi and other products, key product types. We're gonna end the year with 5% of the tech left in the water because of the slower fishing and, and the that equates to about 77, 70,000 metric tons of product and 70,000 in harvest value. Mince production is, a, is an interesting story with Pollock mince production up 41% despite that decline in harvest and that 5% of tack left in the water. And that's due to strong demand for things like fish sticks as well as driven in part by the smaller fish increasing mince production. On the salmon side, we saw the seventh or eighth lowest volume um, since 1976. So quite, quite depressed fisheries this year across the state with the exception of uh, fishing in Kodiak and Bristol Bay were strong on, on the volume side, whereas the value was still down. Kita saw probably saw the biggest drop with, uh, down 61% in volume from 2019 with only 38% of the forecast realized. So run failures again in Chignik and AYK region and low enough fishing that disaster, local disaster declarations in Prince William Sound and Southeast. In Bristol Bay, there was a roughly 50% drop in the base price to pay to fishermen and other drops around the state in fishing prices for salmon. In part, those drew due to pandemic related uncertainties in the market. Also, specifically impacted farmed salmon. There was a huge oversupply. A lot of that product typically went into food service and was diverted into retail. And there's a big price drop in farmed salmon puts downward pressure on Alaska's wild salmon products and competes especially strongly with sockeye salmon. As a result of these trends in lower volumes and values, we're seeing salmon permit values declining around the state with the exception of Kodiak and some permits in area M in the Alaska Peninsula. Pacific cod has been hit with lower tax for many years, several years in a row now, and likely see further decline in the 2021 in the BSAI region. The value side has also been struggling and the pandemic did not help that. This year with lower tax in, the, in, in Alaska and higher tax in Russia, we're gonna see Russia producing more Pacific cod than Alaska, which hasn't been true for a very long time. And to add to the competition and price headwinds, Atlantic supply is increasing and set to increase more over the next couple of years. Halibut, as I mentioned, the pandemic, the National Disaster Declaration came out the day before the halibut sailfish seasons opened. Uh, so those some fishermen were out fishing and had to pull their gear and head back to the to port because their markets disappeared. The biggest money is made the highest margins on fresh product directed for restaurants. And a lot of that fresh market disappeared. And some of some of the sales were able to be shifted over into retail and increased with prices remain depressed compared to where they would have been. Going into 2020, we, we already had an issue with increasing competition with fresh halibut production out of the Atlantic. And that certainly continues. We're, at the time this slide was made, 91% of the tech was harvested here to date. And that's a little bit lower, but within the range of normal. So the fisheries were able to adapt to the changing seasons and in the case of halibut. On the other hand, sailfish were likely to see quite a bit of more than normal of the tack left in the water due to the lower prices and some of the challenges with beginning of the season and having to shift fisheries into the summer and fall. At the time this slide was made, 78% of the southeast sailfish tack was harvested and that's compared to 96% uh, in 2019. 
in, in the sailfish side, we're also seeing increased use of pots. We're seeing larger tacks with smaller fish. And due to the pandemic, with the we're seeing especially difficult pricing and volume movement with the five pound and up fish, as those are typically destined for restaurants. Export prices are down 10% this summer, whereas prices to fishermen are down a lot more than that. Crab is actually a bright spot. Despite an exposure to the food service market, a lot of those were able to still be sold and at strong prices. Snow crab saw increased tax and, and the strong market, strong Dungeness harvest. Overall, according to some retail scanner data, grocery store uh, crab sales up 82% year over year. That's the fourth highest growth after oat milk, yeast, and meat alternatives. So looking forward into 2021, a lot of the intention is shifting to the coming fisheries, like the Pollock season, starting in January 2021. On the one hand, we can build on the successes, uh, really working closely together, closer than ever to meet the challenges of the pandemic of 2020. So we build on those lessons into 2021. On the other hand, with case counts and outbreaks around the country increasing and around the world, it'll be harder to source and recruit employees that um, from regions that are and and keep keep them safe, keep outbreaks from spreading. So it's likely to be a the challenge is likely to continue, and and maybe even get worse in the next year. We have this unique opportunity with increased retail spending to turn new seafood consumers into long term consumers with at higher rates of seafood consumption. So it's a really unique opportunity for, for organizations like ASME and GAP to put all their marketing efforts into, into action, even at a higher level and, and really seize this opportunity, which they are doing. Alaska's seafood is more relevant than ever, certainly as I showed that seafood category has grown the most in retail and, and within that, you know, our seafood is certainly prominent. It's a source of American-made, healthy, delicious seafood. The, a lot of this information came from interviews and data that we're tracking for the Oscar Seafood Marketing Institute to track the in, impact of the pandemic on the seafood industry. You can, if you track their website, you'll see um, monthly briefing papers posted and a detailed report in early of next year. We're also likely to launch a online survey in the next couple months that will try to fill some of the gaps in information we've collected so far. Thank you.